Michael Jordan has been dominant on and off the court for almost 40 years now. Throughout this time, he has won six NBA championships, and most people say he could have easily won more if he would have never retired three times. And most people know him now in current time for becoming a billionaire and is heavily related to his sneakers. Jordan Brand has currently released 37 different signature models when it comes to his sneakers. And over the years, the majority of those models have become very iconic, nostalgic, and overall just dope. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 Air Jordan silhouettes to ever release. Coming in at 10th place, we have the Air Jordan 9. Originally released in 1993, retailing at $125 and designed by Tinker Hatfield, Michael Jordan was fresh off of his first retirement after winning three back-to-back -back championships. It's time for me to move away from the game of basketball and decided to go play for the Birmingham Barons. And we also saw him wearing a baseball cleat version of this shoe, which if you can get your hands on the actual shoe that he wore, trust me, that shoe is going for a lot of money. During the same time, Michael Jordan decided to give player exclusive versions to some of the players that were actually active in the NBA during those same years. We saw notable players like Penny Hardaway, Kendall Gill, BJ Armstrong, and Mitch Richmond all wearing exclusive pairs catered to themselves. The Air Jordan 9 was also seen in the movie Space Jam, another iconic film. And from a sneakerhead standpoint, you can never go wrong with this shoe i would consider putting these a little bit higher up on the list but at the same time there's a lot of good shoes that have come out over the years and either way i'm just happy they're on the top 10. coming in at number nine we have the air jordan 7. originally releasing in 1992 retailing at 125 dollars and designed by tinker hatfield the air jordan 7 has been a very iconic model for many years now or seeing him wearing them that same year on pursuit for his second nba title when it comes to this model there's definitely a lot of iconic colorways when it comes to the olympics the Cardinals, the Bordos, and the Dark Charcoals, also known as the Raptors. This is a sneaker that definitely deserves to be on this list. And when it comes to the design elements of this sneaker, they were inspired by the West African tribal prints and the sharp lines that you see throughout the upper. Also in 1992, the Hirachi was hot on the scene and it decided to use the same neoprene technology and fit when it comes to the booty that you see on this model. And that also helped decrease the weight of the shoe, making these some of the lightest sneakers in the game at the time. Now, before we get into the next model, I wanted to let you guys know, I posted a poll on my YouTube community tab that's where I got all the results from and this is based off of the audience my views were a little bit different when it comes to this top 10 but I'm going off of what you guys said we had over 10,000 people vote when it comes to this list so I'm excited to show you guys the next model let's go ahead and get into it and that is the Air Jordan 13 originally releasing in 1997 retailing at $150 and designed by Tinker Hatfield Michael Jordan wore these in pursuit for his sixth championship and the shoe was originally inspired by the Black Panther as you can see the different elements from the paw and the similarities to the midfoot of the shoe or the eye of the panther on the hologram on the side of the foot. Little did they know, Michael Jordan had already been nicknamed the Black Cat in the league, and they ended up using that same Black Cat nickname on other models that we then saw in the future. Everybody remembers Michael Jordan's last shot in his sixth championship win as he wore the Air Jordan 14s, but a lot of people forgot that he actually wore the 13s that season too. The Air Jordan 13 has been reiterated in so many different colorways, collaborations, styles, cuts, materials when it comes to the highs and the lows, but either way, at the end of the day, I know for a fact, a lot of people love this sneaker. Now, when it comes from the sneakerhead perspective, a lot of collectors say Air Jordan 1 through 14 or Air Jordan 1 through 13. So this sneaker in particular was on that line of people liking and not liking the higher number Jordan models simply because they say if he didn't play in them, they don't count. Even though he re-entered into the NBA later and played in higher numbers like the 18s and 19s, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, taking into the next shoe that I know a lot of people love, we have the Air Jordan 12. Originally released in 1996, retailing at $135 in designed by Tinker Hatfield, the Air Jordan 12 was designed by the Japanese flag. This is a very clean and simple model that has been easily recreated in a lot of different two-tone color blocking patterns, and a lot of people love them. This was the first Air Jordan model to feature an ultra-responsive zoom error unit, as well as lateral and medial support panels designed to work together to create one of the most durable shoes in the sneaker series. The shoe also had a full-length carbon fiber shank plate, and these originally released in five different colorways, and I can guarantee you, to any sneakerhead, they love all five of them. At least I think so. I do. What about you? Let me know down below in the comment section. Another iconic moment that a lot of people won't forget when it comes to the Air Jordan 12, the flu game. And we can't forget to mention in 1997, Michael Jordan also went to his 11th NBA All-Star game. He won his ninth NBA scoring title. He was named first team all NBA and all defense. Oh yeah, and he won his fifth championship. So I'm pretty sure it's safe to say there's a lot of history, nostalgia, and iconic moments when it comes to this shoe that caused people to just naturally love him. And it's a pretty clean shoe to say the least. Next up on the list we have one of my favorite sneakers of all time and i don't know how this didn't make the top five i did a vote on these later because it was on the cusp of fifth or sixth and it is in sixth place 
the Air Jordan 6. Originally releasing in 1991, retailing at $125 and designed by Tinker Hatfield, Michael Jordan wanted his first NBA title in this shoe and to me, opened up a whole new chapter in his career. And we can't forget to mention a couple of the OG fan favorites of the Infrared and Carmine 6. Ooh, those are some of my favorites. Now those right there, chef's kiss. Now a couple things that made this shoe even more iconic, we saw Vin Baker and Ray Allen wearing these in the 2000 Olympics with the Olympic colorway. A lot of people thought that was an OG for Michael Jordan, but that was actually for them back in that time. We have seen different PEs from different collectors or images online, and I'm telling you right now, those are fire as well. But I think one that a lot of people forget to mention is Jerry Seinfeld. We saw him wearing the Air Jordan 6s, and I'm telling you right now, that was very iconic to see him mixing fashion and culture on and off the court. Now coming in at fifth place we have another fitting model in placing and that is the Air Jordan 5. Originally releasing in 1990 retailing at $125 and designed by Tinker Hatfield the Air Jordan 5 was a statement of Jordan's aggressive nature on the court. With the 3M reflective tongue and everybody seeing him in the limelight it was definitely a sneaker that was hard to resist. Some design elements that people may or may not have known of was Tinker Hatfield's inspiration from a World War II P51 Mustang fighter jet. As you see the shark teeth on the side of the foot around the midsole that's where that came from. Now we had seen the exposed air unit from the previous models of the Air Jordan 3 and Air Jordan 4, but one thing that was new to the game, the iced outsoles. This was the first model that introduced that element and we saw other models repeat that same trend to follow after. And we can't forget to mention the iconic colorways of the grapes, the metallics, and both of the fire red colorways. This may not be one of the most trendy sneakers in the game, but I can guarantee you year over year, a lot of people love this shoe and they're definitely well deserving of being in the top five. But when you see the next four shoes, you'll understand why they didn't rank any higher than this. Oh yeah, and for those of you that voted on the Air Jordan 5s over the 6s, y'all tripping, bro. I still think the 6s are the best. All right, you guys, we got four sneakers left on the list. Now, this next one right here, I think personally is a number one, but the people voted. They said it's in fourth place. The Air Jordan 11. Originally releasing in 1995, retailing at $125 and designed by Tinker Hatfield, the Air Jordan 11, in my opinion, is one of the most iconic sneakers to ever be made. Tinker Hatfield yet again took innovation to a whole nother level by introducing patent leather on an NBA basketball shoe. Not only did these look stylish on the court, they looked really nice off the court and people even considered these as dress shoes. This was a super high performance shoe called the Jordan 11. And uh, this shoe was, well, like I think it's my all-time favorite shoe because there is so much technology in this shoe. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I done definitely wore some Jordan 11s with some suits before. Not only does everybody remember seeing Michael Jordan wearing the playoff 11s after winning his championship, or seeing boys to men rocking the Concord 11s on stage, we can't forget to mention Space Jam. For me, being a kid growing up in the 90s, that was one of the most iconic movies and a moment that I will never forget. The Air Jordan 11 has a special place in a lot of sneakerheads' hearts, and it's rare that you'll see anybody that just simply doesn't like the shoe at all. Every year during Christmas for the past 10 years, we have seen special colorways and iterations or remakes of OG colorways, something similar to this with the 45 on the back. We saw this one released a couple years ago, but every single Christmas, it becomes the holiday sneaker, and we know everybody goes crazy for this model. We have seen alternate colorways with the high top model come out in the past and a lot more low top iterations, but when it comes to the high top in particular, Jordan brand has definitely been very careful about that model and protecting it from being flooded with too many colorways similar to other models that we have seen in the past. Now obviously I have a huge bias when it comes to the Air Jordan 6 because that's my favorite model of all time but when it comes to the Air Jordan 11 I think overall as an opinion for the people it has to be number one right? How could this be placed at number four? But after you see the next three models, it just might make sense. Coming in at third place and yet fitting again, the Air Jordan 3. Originally releasing in 1988, retailing at $100, this was Tinker Hatfield's first Jordan model that he had an opportunity to design himself. Not only did he take designing to a whole nother level and create one of the most iconic sneakers ever, there were so many nostalgic moments in this time. With collaborations with legends like Spike Lee on different commercials and advertisements, or seeing Michael Jordan soaring through the air jumping from the free throw line to win the dunk contest, or him pulling out the black cement threes during All-Star Weekend, and trust me, the list goes on, the Air Jordan 3 is definitely a very loved shoe when it comes to sneakerheads, people that don't know much about sneakers, just people in general, they know about the model, they've seen it before, if they don't know everything about it, hopefully I taught you a couple things, but either way, definitely an iconic shoe, and I can understand why it made the top three. Now, next up on the list, I think snuck its way up over the past couple years. Don't get me wrong, this is a fire shoe for sure. I have plenty of pairs in my collection, but I was kind of surprised by this one, just based off of, you know, what I thought from like 
older sneakerhead generations to what's going on now, and maybe it's skewed by the voters that voted, but it is what it is, second place the Air Jordan 4. There has definitely been a lot of different factors that may have played to the placing of this shoe. Don't get me wrong, again, a classic, but there have been a lot of different models and prices being hiked up when it comes to the general releases that have come out to the public over the past couple years and drawing a huge demand behind this model. And say so at one point during the voting, this was actually in first place and I was really surprised. Originally releasing in 1998, retailing at $110 and designed by Tinker Hatfield, the Air Jordan 4 was heavily known for taking flight. With the flight branding on the tongue in this iconic font, it became a staple in the game, and next thing you know, everybody loved them. Originally releasing in the white cement, black cement, military blue, and fire red colorway, this shoe has been hot on the scene ever since. Although the Air Jordan 4 does show similarities when it comes to the back tab in the Nike Air, or the exposed air unit on the midsole, this shoe definitely has its own elements and characteristics that took the Jordan to a whole nother level. After its original release, they decided to retro the black and white cement colorways back in 1990 and they sold out immediately. From that point on, they decided to introduce new colorways, materials, and collaborations, and because of that, we see some models fetching for over $50,000. Now, before we take it to the final sneaker, I wanna say thank you guys for watching this video, and again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join the fam if you wanna see any more videos like this in the future. Now, I'm excited to show you guys this model. I wasn't shocked all the way, but I still think the Jordan 11 is the best sneaker of all time. It is what it is. I'm pretty sure you guys know what it is by now. The Air Jordan 1, originally releasing in 1985, retailing at $65 and designed by Peter Moore. We saw iconic posters of him wearing the sneaker while he was dunking in his flight suit. Next thing you know, it became the Jumpman logo or huge commercials about the sneaker being banned and him being charged $5,000 back in 1988 for wearing the shoes on court. Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Even though it was the airships, which is a whole nother story, we'll talk about that later. But either way, the Jordan 1 came hot on the scene and everybody was loving them as soon as they hit the market. Year over year over year, retro over retro over retro, colorway over colorway over colorway, the sneaker has been around for over 30 years now and it has created a huge hype in the game. And I can guarantee you any sneaker head out there that collects Jordans especially, they got a pair of Jordan 1s in their collection. And if they haven't gotten a pair yet, they plan on getting a pair for their collection because there's just so many iconic OG colorways. There were a lot that came out originally, plus all the special colorways, collaborations, releases, you name it from the current time now. And then obviously the hype behind the Chicago Air Jordan 1 right here. This is a classic, iconic colorway, something that we saw Michael Jordan bring back on the court later in his career, something that we saw on the court at the beginning of his career. And one thing that we know about a lot of sneakers, collaborations, or you name it, typically the first ever one that has been created always has the one with the most value, the most nostalgia or whatever, because if it wasn't for this and the success over time, none of the other sneakers would have came. So I completely understand why people chose this as the number one sneaker. There's a lot of different options, all the different factors. I know I have my own personal opinions that people voted what they voted. I probably would have put these at second place. It is what it is, but hey, you know what I'm saying? Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was the top 10 Air Jordan models of all time. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. If you wanna see any other top 10 videos, I would love to hear your ideas and I'll hopefully I can make them for you guys. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there.